Okay, ICT Integration Workshop 7.3. Again, we're talking about learning objects, but now we'd like to talk about competitive learning and gamification. So comp competition can drive learning. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, to the point of distraction, but it can actually be useful either for an individual person where you're competing against yourself or if you're competing against other people. So the first one I'm going to look at is uh, Japanese, uh, learning Japanese. The next one is the countries of the world challenge. So for the Japanese one here, this is a game that's been set up. So here we have uh, uh, Hiragana and your Romanji. What you need to do is you try, need to try and guess what this, this one is. So I'm going to think this is Toe, no, 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 yo, ni, yo. Okay, well I've learned that that was yo. And ma, and re, no, no, re. Okay, uh, so. It's not really, it must be neat. So here I'm doing I'm doing terribly at the moment. Um, and but basically what I'm just gonna happen is I start to learn what they are by um, trial and error at first. Um, and eventually you get to the point where you've just learnt them um, as a, a as you go through. So here, once again, here I've got eight out of twenty-two, and you can reset this anytime. So it's good. It's actually a lot of fun for the students to have a go at this. Um, they can go through and learn it. Uh, they can they get better and better. I did a little tiny bit of Japanese when I was at school in year eight, and but going back here, it, it's like a refresher course, and it's great practice for the students. There are hundreds of different versions of these type of things, whether it's uh, learn Japanese or learn learn language or learn skills. Um, we did um, uh, Quizlet. Um, I've got, there's some other versions that you do that are similar. Um, the next one I'll watch, I want you to do is look at Countries of the World Challenge, which I have pre-recorded um, and sped up to make it a little bit better. Where's your country? So it's something that's called Countries of the World Challenge. Um, basically, I'm just going to play this game. I've played this lots of times and I've practiced it, so give me that heads up. Hopefully I get it right. So I'm going to call out the countries as I go so you know this is real. Okay. Apologies if I make a mistake. Spain, Ireland, Japan, Italy, China, Russia, Denmark, Argentina, Netherlands, Finland, Egypt, Latvia, Mauritania, Mauritania, Germany, United States, United Kingdom, India, Turkey, Austria, Mexico, South Africa, Afghanistan, Tunisia, the Congo, Slovakia. Ethiopia, Zimbabwe, Uzbekistan, Andorra, San Marino, Micronesia, Singapore, we have one. Bahrain, and Monaco. Still made some mistakes, but so that's uh, countries of the world. Um, obviously, I didn't get this right the first time. I had my wife playing this just before. Uh, the first time she got 400 points. So she got, I think it was about 10 right. Second time she got 12 right. Third time she got 14 right. And then she kept on saying, well, can I have another go? Can I have another go? Uh, if you get the students to do this, it'll probably be the same way that you'll, uh, the kids will go, oh, I want to try it again. I want to try it again. And the, it's all gamified learning. So the students really want to do well. Um, I can't remember how many times I've actually played this uh, to get these kind of results. Um, but I found it really enjoyable and a lot of fun, and I, I kept on challenging myself. Can I do better? Can I do it faster? So that is countries of the world. Next one is gamification. So this is similar to competitive learning, and it's the concept of applying game design thinking to a different form of, uh, to non-game applications, right? So basically, uh, we're actually getting students to play games to, to learn by, by accident, really, or by ambush. Um, and there's a really good article there for you to have a look at. So here's some examples of the top 10 gamification things. Duolingo is one of the uh, world's best uh, um, language learning app at the moment. Um, it's promoted on many, many different platforms. 
uh, and it's a great way of learning learning games, uh, learning languages. Class Dojo is one that's used in class, uh, which actually tracks students' behaviour, and it's, um, it's used in many schools. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, Coursera is not so much gamification as just a MOOC and allows you to um, learn stuff. And Socrative, we've done already. So gamification, another example of gamification is uh, robotics, learning robotics uh, for medicine. Now, the people that originally were doing robotics, and to be a, a med medical doctor, you need to do a certain amount of hours of practice before you can become a proper robotic doctor, I guess you'd call it. And there's whole uh, laboratories set up where there's just lots and lots of robots. And f the story goes, it was um, there was one one of these uh, robotic factories, basically, and you know the doctors would rock up, and there'd be twenty different um, operating theaters that they had to go through, and they had to rack up all their hours. And the, this is you know getting getting the uh, um, using the tools to stack. Um, three rice grains on top of each other. And they have to do something like 20 hours of work uh, on each one before they're actually qualified. And, you know, the docs came in and they loved it at first, but doing that for 20 hours, they found it was boring. So what the, there was a company that actually went in and designed a game where they had to track the student, uh, um, move these little characters around the screen. So they were using the robotics to control these, char these characters and they had to pick them up. And they got used to using tools and they found the doctors were much more inclined to play the game and get up their hours than just by simply stacking. Now that's obvious, you know, we, we all would prefer to play a game rather than doing stuff. We do it all, every day in life. Here is another slightly different one. So this is called Classcraft. So this is coming at it from a different angle. Instead of um, the game itself, driving the learning. In this case, the game is, dry, is, not, is not really related to learning. Instead, the game is running in this class the whole time, and by doing your learning, you're actually getting points for within your game. So the story goes that um, you've got your character, so you choose your character, whoever, whichever character it may be, and as you're doing learning in the class, you'll actually rack up points. So here's this is the guy that created it, um, and here's the class running here. As the students are answering questions, so he's a, the teacher gives the students points, and they can then use those points uh, to upgrade the character or, um, or even get rewards. And the way the way he tells it is, he, the rewards can actually be real. So it might be um, you're allowed extra time for a test, or it could be you're allowed to eat in class, or um, you know you can you can skip a test or something, or um, you can allow to use a calculator or not allow to use a calculator. You know depending on whether you know you've you've done the right thing. What he found was that the students are so engaged in the learning and, and to try and do well with their group, or guild as they're called, that they actually, the, the learning is actually happening a lot faster than it would normally. Um, this has been, it's, it's everything I've heard about has been fantastic. I've tried it out a little bit and enjoyed it. Um, it's, uh, from a teacher's point of view, it's free to set up in your class, right? And you can see in here, so you can, each student can set up their uh, they're basically characters, 800 pieces of gear unlocked, there's boss battles and stuff. So basically these, these are games and quizzes and stuff inside the class. So Classcraft is a really useful tool to keep track of what's going on in the class um, and it's gamified. So it basically students are seeking to do well. It's the same as if you have um, uh, in Harry Potter, have got the um, Hogwarts Cup where you're trying to, they're losing points or gaining points depending on how well they're doing. All right, so the discussion board for this week, we've got through it pretty quick. It's been a short week. Um, basically, what did you think of the Countries of the World Challenge and how did you go? And how many how many times did you play and how did you did you get better after each attempt? In other words, did you just play it once because I told you to play it and then that was it? Or did you play it once and go, hang on, I'm going to have to play it again? Or did you play it as many times as I have which you know, and rack up as many points as you could? Next, I want to. I want you to have looked at one of the websites that we've covered, one of the websites or um, learning objects or so on, um, and explain how you'd use it in your classroom. And the third point is gamification is not a new concept. Right? So the use of games to promote competition, it's been used in education for many years. What type, the question I want to know is what games might you play in the classroom to promote learning by competition? Okay, so you can just be, uh, just go over and say, oh, I'm going to use... Um, Socrative or a Quizlet like we did in a different one. Or you might say, you know what, I'm going to use Monopoly to try and understand um, uh, 
money and finance or something. It doesn't have to be an ICT game, but how are you actually going to use gamification to, to promote learning in your class? All right, so this week we've gone through um, the Strength Professional Standards 1, 5, and 7. So that's it for this week. Good luck.